This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. What I'm looking at today is 2018's The Meg, directed by John Turtletaub. And this is a terrible movie. Now keep in mind something. When I talk about terrible in this context, I'm not talking about, for instance, the acting, which is acceptable. It's not great. It's a Jason Statham vehicle. So you know, you're going to get pretty much a bombastic, overdone performance from not only him, but the people around him. That's not what I mean. The effects were, for the most part, pretty good. That's also not what I'm referring to. What I'm talking about is, this is a movie that, as I mentioned, came out in 2018. Shark Week has been with this for a while. People have fears of sharks, no doubt, and with good reason. But at the same time, a lot of the myths revolving around them have been dispelled. And this movie, this movie has come at a time where people don't really believe a lot of the horror stories they've been told about these creatures. The movie revolves around, it's actually based on a novel, which I haven't read, though I would hope it's better than this movie. And it revolves around a megalodon, which is a species of shark that supposedly died out millions of years ago, and some people think that's still alive today. It's highly unlikely, I wouldn't say impossible, because keep in mind, the coelacanth was supposed to be extinct as well, until it was discovered that they were being hunted and eaten in certain parts of the world. So, it's, Megalodon is possible to exist, because keep in mind something, we don't know what this fish actually looked like. As far as I'm aware, there were no full fossils of Megalodon ever found. There were just teeth, which told you that this thing was massive, but we don't know what it actually looked like. It's probable that it resembled today's sharks, but if you actually look at sharks, they have quite a variety of forms. They have certain features in common, of course, but there's actually quite a bit of variety in the design of the shark. So we don't know what the megalodon actually looked like, though the odds are that it doesn't exist today. And this movie posits that this creature does exist. And that's fine, but the thing is, the movie is so cliched. And there's nothing wrong with cliches, by the way. They exist for a reason. Namely, they work really well, and so movie makers keep repeating them. That's not the problem. The problem is, is when you have a movie filled with cliches, that it's very apparent that it's a movie filled with cliches. That's when you run into trouble. And the Meg is filled to bursting with cliches. You have a grizzled veteran of this creature who barely escaped with his life. He goes away, he becomes a bit of a drunk, but he's drawn back in because his wife is going underwater again to be threatened by this creature. Everyone in this movie is a cliche. And this movie was financed by Chinese companies, or at least a large part of it. How do I know that? Because anytime you have a movie, and I know this sounds somewhat cynical, but it's also true. Anytime you have a movie, especially a big movie like The Meg, take place in China with a cast that includes Chinese people, you're talking about a movie that was probably financed by Chinese film companies. That's the nature of the business. But that's the thing about The Meg. Everything is so blatant. There are ways you could do these things that don't look quite as obvious as this, but everything about this movie is obvious and on the nose. And in fact, it surprised me. There was a scene where you have a copter flying over where it thought the giant shark was. They resisted the urge to have the shark leap out of the water and eat the helicopter. And I give them credit for that. And I should mention as well that this movie is sometimes entertaining. It's sometimes funny. It's sometimes clever. It's a lot of things some of the time, but it's not anything consistently except bloated, except predictable, except something you have seen before. And that's its greatest problem. If it had a little more edge to it, it could have actually been a really interesting movie, but it doesn't. It gives you everything you've seen before, 
with people doing things in ways that you have also seen before. It's, it's visually interesting enough that it's not boring. It's also not very good. I would call it a popcorn movie, but that, I think, insults popcorn movies. It's just not a very good movie. And if you have it on cable, I would check it out. I mean, it's not unwatchable. It's just that it does nothing. And I mean this literally. It does nothing you have not seen done better elsewhere. I mentioned earlier that we're much more informed about sharks now than we were in, let's say, the days of Jaws, which I think is the 1970s. The thing about that is, this movie is too silly to be taken seriously. In the case of Jaws, well, in the moment, I think Jaws was terrifying. Now, looking at it with the mechanical shark, it was just kind of silly. But at least that silliness seemed logical. What you see in the Meg oftentimes is just silliness, it's spectacular, it's overblown, and as I said, it's not a great movie. It's watchable. If you had nothing to do on a Saturday or Sunday and you wanted to see it, I'd watch it, frankly. It's not great, nor is it particularly memorable, but it's interesting. Uh, I'll give it that. It's not a very good movie, but at least it's interesting for what it's worth. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review.